Hey fellow readers, today I am talking about Volume 1 in Aneko Yasagi's light novel series, The Rising of the Shield Hero. Now, this one features main character Naofumi Iwatani. He is a college student, and he is a self-described otaku. And in order to compensate for the fact that he is on a college student's wages, he goes to the library and sort of catches up on his light novels and manga there. Now, the story begins with him going to the library and finding this sort of mysterious book, and he decides to start flipping through it, and in the midst of flipping through it, he loses consciousness. When he wakes up, he finds himself in an entirely new world, a fantasy-type world, where he's informed that he is one of four chosen heroes who has been brought to this land in order to prevent its destruction. And, of course, from the title you can guess, each of the heroes are given a weapon. In his case, it's not a weapon, it is a shield. Now, the main story is basically about Nafumi sort of trying to basically get good enough that he doesn't die. <laughs> I mean, that's really, I would say, mostly his goal in this particular story. It is told in first person from his point of view. Now, I was a little iffy on this book to begin with, because, first of all, first person, I'm always a little afraid that the character's voice isn't going to be that interesting or engaging. I'm going to lose track of it. And also because it was so very cliche that it's another one of those modern era people transported into a fantasy world. There's even a lot of video game tropes like they can pull up a menu to look at like you know, different things like their stats, or to look at help menus and stuff like that. So I was kind of a little bit turned off initially by that because I thought this is just a person trapped in a video game story that's trying to not be a person trapped in a video game story. But what's really neat about this book is that everything gets flipped on its head. The other three heroes are basically a group of D-bags, and Nafumi himself finds himself getting pretty screwed over, and eventually he's pretty much left to his own devices, and suddenly we have this pretty much an anti-hero. Like, he is very angry, and nothing like your virtuous heroes like we have with Kirito and Sword Art, or even Haruyuki. Like, I mean, this is not in any way, shape, or form your typical hero. He's not even Shiro in or um, Shiro in Log Horizon. He, he's none of those things. He's a very unique character, which immediately grabbed me and kind of pulled me in, and I thought to myself, like, what is going to happen to this guy that he's now found himself in this pretty lousy situation? So, in the end... This is actually a really cool book. Again, the world building is very cliche. There's not going to be a lot in here that's going to surprise you in terms of the world building. There's not um, that level of sort of, uh, let me say, intelligence or political craft that you see in, say, Log Horizon. Um, there's not even, like, I mean, I wouldn't say Sword Art had the most fleshed out of worlds, but it at least was what it was. I mean, it was very upfront about it being a video game. This, like I said, they try to make it out that it's some alternate world that he's been dragged into, but yet it's it's really like an RPG. It really is like Sword Art Online. It is the character himself and the other characters around him that really set this one apart, but they set it apart enough that I had a lot of fun with it, and I really enjoyed it. And in fact, uh, Within about 10 minutes of finishing this one, I ordered Volume 2. So that should probably give you an idea. So those are my thoughts on Volume 1 of The Rising of the Shield Hero. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, hit the like button. Click on subscribe so you can check out my future light novel reviews, including, uh, well, future reviews of The Rising of the Shield Hero. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you in my next one. Until then, bye-bye for now.